It's the Memphis Sports Network. WMC Memphis, WMFS HD2 Bartlett Memphis. WMFS FM and HD1 Bartlett, WMFS Memphis. ESPN 790 AM and 92.9 FM ESPN. The views and opinions of the hosts or guests of the following program do not necessarily reflect those of the management or staff of Intercom Memphis. Watch the sun rise, new days dawning, and it's calling you and me. Where the mighty Mississippi flows by Memphis, Tennessee. We've got woodlands, fields, and water. Hey, there is no better way. You can find. Saturday morning and welcome to another edition of the award-winning Outdoors with Larry Ray on ESPN 790 AM. Brought to you proudly by Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency, Barton Power Sports, Sportsman's Warehouse, and Best Care Home Services. Now, here's your host, Larry Ray. Hey, good Saturday morning. Welcome to Outdoors with Larry Ray on ESPN 790 on this the. Uh, the last Saturday in October, it's hard to believe, um, we have breezed through this month. We have finally got some <laughs> cold weather as we get into the Halloween season and uh, a lot of things going on. We are trying to hook up with Dale Sanders. Dale has completed, uh, at least we hope he has, his journey on the Appalachian Trail and uh, we're supposed to talk to him right off the bat this morning. He's, he had a lot of things going on at Harper's Ferry. Uh, he, he walked that last mile on Thursday uh, to complete that 2,000-plus journey that uh, started back in um, April and it went a little bit longer than he expected because of uh, complications and weather and also that he's 82 years old. Okay, so we're, we're trying to get Dale. Uh, this being the fourth Saturday, that means it's bonus Wong. Uh, he has been everywhere. <laughs> he is uh, now maxed out on his uh, car, traveling card. Uh, he's been limited now. He's got all his co- he's got his Costa outfit on and his uh, anything else. Well, I don't even want to know what else he's got on over there. But of course, we have the Avery man here. He's got his bandit out. But I like that. That. Yeah, I did a little banded vest this morning. It's yeah. uh, you know, for the temperatures today. I mean, I tell you what's exciting. You it, know, this time of it year, it was like waterfowl hunting. It was like waterfowl hunting. And it's, it's getting all close. the hunters are getting uh, off the water, and Ron can take over. Ron's taking over. He's taking over the water. And, I love it. And we're going to talk a lot of um, uh, waterfowl. We're going to talk a lot about fishing. Um, Jesse Wiggins, professional angler, bass angler. Jesse Wiggins. He won the. Uh, Bass Pro Shops Bass Master Southern Open on the Alabama Smith Lake. He's got an interesting story about uh, his career and everything, and uh, has now qualified for next year's Bass Master Classic on South Carolina's Lake Hartwell in March, where uh, Lord willing, Ron will be there. I hope so. With a lot of pat, he looks like a NASCAR driver. Or something he's got patches all over him. You know, he's got the, <laughs> got these people that the, he represents and everything. And, and Ron, I will say that uh, Chase Anderson on last week's show, the new uh, head man for uh, BASS, yeah. now that the Anderson the media has uh, bought the majority uh, ownership in BASS, I did uh, tell him a lot about you and look for you. And he can't wait to track well, you down. I'll be there. He's 37, and he's he, he can still move pretty good. So uh, it was a great uh, shoot. He's half my age. Uh, well, we won't even. He's already gone into age, and we haven't talked about another subject yet. It'll yeah, come, well, it'll uh, it'll come real <laughs> soon, I know, because he's got to get down to Oxford this morning, and uh, uh, we're, that's all we're going to say is, uh, you know, I'm not going this year because I have bad vibes. 
you know. Bad I don't. Vibes. You shouldn't have mm. bad vibes. Yeah. yeah, I have bad vibes on this whole year. You know, you know because uh, as soon as I can get out here, yes, I'm on my way down there. And, yeah, yeah, that's you, it. You know, we don't want to. We don't want to talk anymore. That's enough. Uh, <laughs> that's enough. <laughs> it's, it's a the battle of the trench. <laughs> that's right. Trench mouth is probably what it is, but. Uh, Charlie Bunting, he is the winner. He and his son Travis of the um, American Crappie Trail Tournament last uh, week. Another one of the events that Ron was at. Either his, it was either Ron or, or one of his triplets, you know, and everything. So uh, <laughs> he is in a lot of places at the same time. Is he not? Wonder. Is he not? Yeah. Well, there's so many Wongs out there. How do we know we got the wrong wrong? I mean, the right Wong. You never know. You never know. But uh, I'm looking forward to that because it was quite a tournament. Uh, that they had up in Missouri, and uh, these guys uh, know how to crappie fish. That's they, for sure. They really 2012 do. national champions. I saw some of that stuff about that. Uh, Father son duo, and uh, I saw a one one video that uh, they were a little excited up on the uh, stage. They absolutely were, and you know what's so good, Larry, that Charlie is our age. You know, and so. That was some good stuff, uh, I'll tell you. And, uh, you know, that's going to be a great story. We're also going to be talking with James Watson, who was part of the USA team fishing in a world championship in South Africa, along with our buddy from across the river, Mark Rose. But we're going to have James Watson talking about that. He was so thrilled to be able to represent the USA, the USA and, and to stand up. He's got a great story about what they did, about the national anthem over there, yeah, I'm and lucky. how everybody uh, had recognized each one of the national, champ, uh, national anthems. Uh, God, what a great lineup yes. we have this and, and, and we're going to kick it off. We do have the man himself on the phone on this Saturday morning. He has completed... The journey that no one uh, other than a lot of us knew he could do it, but uh, we can't. I couldn't do we it. are really proud yeah. to have the gray beard adventurer himself on this Saturday morning. Uh, Dale Sanders of Bartlett. Good morning, Dale. Well, good morning. <laughs> How are you guys there? Oh, right Dale, we're Texas. so we're so thrilled for you. I, I know that last mile at Harper's Ferry on Thursday, uh, walking in. Uh, the crowd and everything, the jubilation. Uh, tell us how it feels to finally do this. Euphoric. I mean, <laughs> uh, having hiked the uh, entire 2,190 miles yes. uh, is something that I'm, I, I tell you, to be honest with you, I didn't even think I was could do it when I first started. I just knew that I would take one day at a time. Yes. And one step at a time, and 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 it just it all came together, and I was able to pull it off. How many steps did you take? <laughs> I counted them up. It's it's something millions. I millions. Uh, it's got to be. I don't. Yeah, you. Yeah. I, I, I calculated <laughs> out how many steps I took. At the same oh time. my gosh! And uh, two million two hundred fifty thousand, or something like that. And that that's that's amazing. And and I know uh, it wasn't an easy journey. Talk about uh, uh, the, the the maybe some things that y- you know you didn't expect. But man, you're eighty two now. So I mean, uh, do you? No, do, do, I didn't ex- do, do, do you feel eighty two? No, I don't feel I don't I'm not hurting at all. When I I can't believe when I finished I turned around and told my friends I have no pain anywhere. <laughs> and that I kinda expected that I was gonna do permanent damage to some joints or yes, something. Yeah. Uh on the tr- I was out there for seven months. Yeah, that was in the, on top of the mountains for seven months, you know, up the continental divide. And that was more than you really, you you know, you were trying to get in, what, in September or something? You had a, a plot, but uh, the, the, it's... Yeah, I was trying, hoping to get in there by the last of September, but I did have some... I had planned a midpoint break to go yes. home for, uh, for 10 days. And, and unfortunately, after I got back to, after that break on the trail, I had some health issues uh-huh. I had to go yeah. back home again, so yeah. that delayed me two weeks, and... And so I should have actually finished before the first day of October. It's sometimes late September. I don't care, Dale. You finished. You said the word right there. You were determined, weren't you? 
I, you pushed I was yourself. Pretty much determined. If I hadn't been, I would tell you, I would have given up many times. I was, I was, honestly, almost the first four and five months, I was almost ready to give up any time. But somebody would come by and give me some encouraging words, or so, something would happen that would just, just like an angel was following uh-huh. me, and, yeah, and telling me and, and giving me these uh, little hints that I should stay on the trail. The, the, the most significant one was uh, about a month before, a month and a half before I finished, I called my, I was really, really depressed. Your yeah. mind does strange things to I can you imagine. The mountains yeah. for seven months. Yes. And I was ready to quit. I called my wife, Miriam, and I said, do you want me to come home? And her response, instead of yes, her response, um, it almost makes me cry to think about it. But her response was, no, you have to finish that thing. <laughs> and and I said, okay, I'll finish it. And you did. And that's the, and otherwise, if she hadn't have said that, I'd, I would have never hiked the Appalachian Trail at any age, much less 82. Well, I know that... Uh... Uh, you have uh, you have a vast, more uh, wide range of uh, new friends now, Dale. Uh, this has been a journey that you had. You've been alone many times, but at the same time, like you said, uh, I mean, you blew up the internet, you blew up social media. The pictures were great, uh, you know, uh, those kind of things. Uh, you are an inspiration, and I know you did this for a reason. Yeah, I did it to, to raise awareness for juvenile, juvenile diabetes, yes. hoping that in some small way uh, the uh, the people will be inspired and maybe donate or something will happen. Eventually, we'll hopefully find a cure to that yeah, dreaded yeah. childhood disease. Yeah. And, and I also, uh, you know, wanted to honor Chief Greybeard, Indian yes. Chief uh-huh. Greybeard, who survived the... Uh, Trail of Tears March, and if he can survive that, I can survive the AT. <laughs> well, you have survived it, buddy, and uh, we can't wait to see. What's the, what's the schedule? Are you coming home uh, 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 as soon as you can and uh, take some rest, I'm assuming? You're not going back to work, are you, for a while? No, I'm going to take some <laughs> time off and rest with the family. And, Good. And I've yeah. got to catch up on all of my social media <laughs> stuff, too. You do. I'm a little bit behind on that. i got several interviews scheduled uh, and videos uh, that are being worked on. Uh, so it's going to it, do a lot of that stuff. It's going to be a wonderful Thanksgiving, isn't it? Yes, it is, because I'll be with my wife, my family, and my dog. That's right. That's right. And you will have done it. Uh, Dale, uh, we'll talk to you when you get back home, get you in the studio. And, uh, uh, again, God bless you, buddy. You've uh, been an inspiration for, uh, you know, every time I would feel like I'm old, I'd think of Dale. Now, I don't mean that as a derogatory comment either. I mean, you've inspired a, a lot of folks, young folks, middle age, uh, millenniums, millenniums, and millennials, whatever they are like that. But uh, uh, hats off to you, buddy, and we'll see you when you get home and uh, just soak it in and, and, and take it, okay? Well, thank you so much, and God bless all you great folks there in Memphis, Tennessee. All right. Thanks, Dale. All right. Dale Sanders. Let's take a break. I wish I had more time. We'll talk to Dale when he gets – but is, is that not amazing, guys? Absolutely amazing. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. I, I I can't even think about taking it on at my age, much less 82. And take seven months of your life. Right, right. Uh, I mean, that's just, and, uh, and to do it. An incredible, so, of course, I ex- incredible accomplishment. Well, believe it or not, this year Ron has walked more than Dale. Uh, covering events for us, you know he. Is, that's true, you know. Ron if we, is, if we, is out there. we got to put a step meter on him. We should. You know, know it's pretty amazing how many steps you take covering events. Uh, <laughs> that's right. Running around trying to get pictures, uh, and you could go up to uh, two, three hundred yards in a hurry to try to capture. So he is our man on the on the on the bass trail and the crappie trail. He is the he, he is the man. Trail. He's all over that. Yeah, we'll have to have. Him. A circuit named after him. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah. All right, let's Not. take a break. Let's get out of here. We'll take a break, come right back, and try to hook up with uh, a man that's uh, feeling pretty happy right now, Jesse Wiggins on Outdoors with Larry Ray on ESPN 790. You can find 